All right, so anyway, let me take you on a little trip around Grodna. So I'm in the center of Grodna in the main square. Now, it's been a while since I did a questions and answers with you guys. Now, I've received a lot of questions from you guys. So what, how about the perfect opportunity to answer your questions? All right, here we go. Let's start with question number one. Question number one, can I come to Belarus? And the answer is, yes, you can. If you are flying in as a tourist, as visa free, you have to fly in only via in and out Minsk International Airport. You cannot use the land borders. If you want to come in via the land border over Poland or through Lithuania, you will need a visa. And for that, you need to go to a, a Belarusian embassy in your local country or if that's not possible, apply for the visa in the Belarusian embassy in a different country. Now, in Belarus, of course, we have two visa-free zones. These are the Brest and the Grodna region. If you're doing it via there, you have to stay within the regulated areas as set out by the uh, Ministry of, uh, of Interior and Foreign Affairs. So you can only stay there for about 15 days in total. If you stay longer for five days in the country, you have to register uh, with the authorities. If you're staying in a hotel, the hotel will do this for you. If you are a citizen of Poland, you can come visa-free, no problem. If you're flying from the West, remember because of the sanctions, there are no direct flights from the West into Belarus. So what you'll have to do is, you'll have to fly in to Istanbul International Airport, Atatürk Airport, and then get the flight from there to Minsk. So, yes, you can come to Belarus. So, that's question number one. The town of Grodna, ever since its foundation, has changed hands many times over the last eight or so centuries. Grand Duchy of Lithuania, Poland, Russia, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Soviet Union, and of course, during the Second World War in 1941, Grodna was invaded by Nazi Germany. And like a lot of towns and cities here in Belarus, it has a very, very tragic history. And here, if you can see on Zamkovaya Street, we have in memory the 29,000 Jews who perished in the ghetto. And the ghetto stood here between 1941 and 1943. And the reason why there, were, there was a high Jewish population in Belarus is because under the Tepela settlement, the Jews were settled in Western Ukraine, in Belarus, in the Baltic countries, and of course in Western Russia. And when the Nazis invaded in 1941, the Jews began to get massacred and were immediately deported to various death camps. And those who couldn't, like the Jews in Minsk and the Jews here in Grodna were murdered on site en masse. But a very, very sad history. And the Holocaust, as such, should never be forgotten when we're teaching history. There's a bloke there going off for a day's fishing in the Neyman. All right, let's move on to question number two. Are you married? Now, I get asked lots of personal questions. So anyway, I'll answer this one for you. I'm not married and I have no intention of getting married for the time being. I enjoy my freedom and I enjoy my independence. So there you go. Maybe sometime in the future. Who knows? Check out this interesting church here. This is the Kaluja or the St. Boris and Gleb church and was first built sometime in the 13th century. Let's go up, let's have a look at it. But if we want to, we have to climb these very, very steep steps. Oh, bloody hell guys. Make sure, whoops, bring some proper boots because my Adidas 
runners are going to find this quite difficult to get up. Oh, oh. let's see if I can get up here. I'm breaking my neck, I'm falling down the hill behind me. Oh, I managed to get up that at those steps. Wow, it's quite an arduous journey, to say the least. All right, let me give you a bit of a, a view of the Kalusia Church. Very famous medieval church. Of course, it's Orthodox. And that's it there. All right, and as you can see, we have the original stone. Yeah. Kalusia. And uh, like a lot of Orthodox churches, of course, they are going to be open. Yeah. There it is there. What, a, what an amazing old building we have and you can see the original stone that was used to construct the church quite amazing I want to show you something on the other side this church has actually quite a very very interesting history and this church has stood many wars invasions many cataclysmic events that have visited this land over the last 800 years or so. However, in 1858, half the church, during a storm, caved into the Neyman River. And you can see it here, half and half. You can see the original brickwork and the recently renovated part of the church. Yeah, so on this part we have wood, wood panelling and because of that storm we had to rebuild the church again but it's actually quite amazing inside I have been here before and not a good number of years ago and of course it is open like all Orthodox churches most welcoming yeah and there it is half the original stonework and the other half the renovated part and it gives you a nice to tell you when the church was actually built yes it was in the 12th century quite remarkable you can see the original brickwork the original building the original, original church here you can see where it was renovated It's gonna rain again. Anytime I come to Grodna, it always rains. All right, question number three. What do you think of Vladimir Putin? Do you support Putin? Hmm, we're getting into the nitty gritty of things here right now. Okay, so short answer to that. No, I don't. Anyway, I'll let you guys in a little bit of a secret. I prefer Lenin. Check it out, folks. This is the old Grodna Castle. 
and it's been built on and refurbished many times over the last five to six hundred years and it has its roots and traces back in the times of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania this castle here was the seat of the Hrodna Principality and also of the different dukes who lived in this castle and as we can see we can see the coat of arms of the Polish and the Lithuanian Commonwealth that I've mentioned many times on this channel but unfortunately today the castle is closed today being a Monday what a pity yeah so as we can see it's closed on Monday and I'm leaving tomorrow oh well maybe some other time wow you can check out actually the fortifications and how actually thick the walls are quite impressive and if you're scared of heights this is not the place to be because if you see in front of me this castle of course is built on a very very high moat and there's a big drop I reckon of about 80 meters on either side of the castle <laughs> this is the new palace straight across from the old castle and this palace here was built in the 18th century by the rulers of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth and it was right here in 1795 where the last king of Poland Stanislaw Poniatowski now you remember him from my video in Niezwisch where he, where he abdicated of course at the final the third and final partition of Poland in 1795 1796 and also a year beforehand is where Tadeusz Kostuszko where he came here and where he met the rebels in, a, in an attempt in a last desperate attempt to rise rebel against the Russian overlords who came here during the final partition of Poland and also during the Soviet Union it also acted as the regional headquarters of the Communist Party of Belarus. maybe it's open let's see Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Это музей открыли ста? Музей закрыт. Закрыт? Сегодня выходной музей. Завтра приходите. Самоцветы вот работает. Хорошо, да. Пойдете рубль пятьдесят туда. Рубль пятьдесят, да. Спасибо. Well, as the lady said, only some of it is open today. But anyway. Women's jewelry. Let's give you an idea of what it's like inside here. But unfortunately, the main museum is closed. So, if you want to buy some jewelry for your girlfriend or your wife, this is the place to come. I wonder what old Stanislav Ponatowski would have made of that. Anyway, let's push on. Well, I've been out and about all day. I've been walking everywhere and I've worked up quite an appetite so the time now it's not three three o'clock the time now as it shall be named from here on in the time is food o'clock 
But there we go. We're at the campuses of uh, Grodna State University. Let's go inside, let's have some dinner. Hello. I'm looking for a restaurant, Estolovia. Yeah. It's where yeah. it's just down the stairs. Yes, yes. Oh, great. Thank you very much. You speak very good English. Thanks. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, so, catch you guys later. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, so, just in there. Okay, let's go inside and uh, let's grab a bite to eat. Yeah, there we go. Happy days. Yeah, it's open. It's in there. All right, let's see if we can get. Let's see if there's a menu in here somewhere. Okay, let's get the fork. Здравствуйте. Добрый день. Добрый. Холодничок. А, нет, спасибо. Гречка. Гречка есть, да. Что я могу кушать? Рыба, куриная котлета, свиная котлета. О, гладко вкусно. Можно куриная котлета, пожалуйста? Гречку. У вас картофель пюре? Нету. Только гречка, да? Да. Да, можно гречка, пожалуйста? Два, пожалуйста. Да, а, куриные? Куриные, да, конечно. Еще погреть? Так, погреть, пожалуйста, да. Так, хорошо. Хлебушек? Хлебушек, да. Кусочек. Пять семнадцать. Хорошо. Спасибо. Пожалуйста. Okay, let's see what we have here for grand total of five rubles and seventeen kopeik. That's about roughly take about two euros. So we have. Gretschke. We have a bit of beetroot with uh, mayonnaise for the salad. And as I asked for, two chicken cutlets. Hmm. Not bad for the old provinces in the Stadovia of Grodna State University. Mm. That is really nice. Bloody awesome. That's why I love all these little canteens. You can get a nice hearty, delicious meal for next to nothing. Mmm. Of course, a bit of bread as well. Mm. I'm washed down by some boiled juice. Oh, bloody awesome. Where else would you get it? Anyway. Good old meals, get it into you. Cheers. Mm. Of course, Belarus is famous for its beetroot and mayonnaise, of course. And cutlets, chicken cutlets. All right. Mm. Okay. Let me eat this in comfort. I'll be back to you very, very soon. Mm. 
Спасибо. До свидания. Okay, question number four. Now, I get asked this question quite a lot. Can I come and live and work here in Belarus? Well, if you want to come and live here, there are a number of ways you can actually do this. So I'm gonna break up this question. The first and most obvious way is through marriage. So you come to Belarus, you meet a local gal, sweep her off her feet and you get married to her. However, I have to warn you, the divorce rate in this country is at over nearly 50%. Yeah, that's a high one. So just gotta be careful. And uh, if you divorce, the contract is broken and you have to leave the country. So that's the first, that's part A, marriage. Okay, now for part B of question number four. How can I stay here longer? How can I live here? Now, this is where my old mate, Andrei Bordenkov, this is where he comes into the equation. The second way which you can live here longer is if you purchase property. So any kind of property that you buy here, as long as it's not a dog kennel or a shed or something, if it's habitable, if it's livable, if you purchase that property, what happens is, Andre, of course he's an interpreter, he will help you to register with Ogim, Ogim of, of Immigration and Labour, and he will register you with them, and you register there at the property, and of course Ogim will visit you. You have to be there, they'll ask you some questions, and pretty much you're good to go. They will give you a temporary residency permit in which you will have to um, update it every year. Now all you need is to find the babushka, and that's it. Right across from me is the pedagogical faculty of the Grodna State University. Right, and that leads me nicely on to the next part of my question, part C of question number four, can I live here in Belarus? And that is education. Now this is the route that a, lot of, that a lot of people will make. People actually do come here from all around the world and they stay here for four, five, six years, which they will study medicine, uh, dentistry, uh, engineering, and so on. So for the vast majority of people who watch my channel, mainly from the West, your best bet if you want to stay here and live here in Belarus is to study here. And the most popular route that 99% of people will take will be to study at the Minsk State Linguistic University, study Russian. And there are a number of people, quite a lot of people that I do know of, who've actually taken that route. One of them is a guy from Australia, and uh, he runs the Australian in Belarus YouTube channel. And the vast majority of them come here, and they study here for six months, a year or two, study Russian, and then they move on. All right, so that's part C, education. Yes, you can. You can stay here, you can live here, and you can study here. The Minsk State Linguistic University. All right, let's move on. And this leads me on to question number five. Can I work here in Belarus? Now, before you come here to live and to work here, you have to consider the, the following points. And that is as follows. Now you have to remember that the average salary here in this country is approximately between four to $500 a month. Now that's approximately 10 times less than it is in the West. Now that's in Minsk, here in Grodna, it's gonna be a lot lower. In terms of the cost of living, well, it all depends on what you buy. On an average good, goods at the moment, the inflation rate is at roughly just over 17%. Okay, so 
in terms of work, if you're coming to live and work here, what kind of jobs should you be seeking? And there are two options for a would-be expat. The first one is through a language school, an English, French, Polish, German language school. The second option is through an IT company. Now, IT companies and such foreign companies pay a lot more than the local company. Okay, so that was number five. It's about living and working here. Well, I think that's it. So I've answered most of the questions that I've received from you, the subscribers, from me, from Grodna in Western Belarus. I bid you all slangafol, agaslan lat, togoboge, dosvidanya, dostrechi.